exchange, whether physical or chemical, involves an exchange of energy with the environment. This exchange of energy can be classified further as either endothermic or exothermic reactions. And that's what we're going to look at today. First of all, a few definitions. Understanding the difference between a system and the surroundings. That part of the universe that we're studying is considered to be the system, whether that be a reaction perhaps taking place in a beaker or what's occurring around a flame. Everything else that's external to that, we call that the surroundings. Put the surroundings and the system together, you have the universe. But the surroundings is not only the air that happens to be around the reaction. It could also be the container itself, could also be considered part of the surroundings. A little bit about an open and a closed system. In an open system, we're able to exchange with both the surroundings and the system, both matter and heat. So substances could move from the surroundings into the reaction or from the reaction out. And likewise, heat could move in or out of the reaction. In a closed system, we put a lid on the container. That doesn't allow us to exchange matter. All we can exchange is the heat. Enthalpy. Enthalpy is given the symbol capital H, and it refers to all of the stored energy that's present in all the chemical and forces in a substance. When something undergoes a reaction, it often has a change in this amount of energy. Enthalpy values also depend upon what state the reaction is taking place at. What I mean by that is the temperature and pressure. Quite often we conduct these experiments at atmospheric pressure, which is 100 kilopascals, and room temperature, 25 degrees Celsius, or 298 Kelvin. To indicate that the reaction is taking place at these conditions, we often indicate that by means of a small O with a line through it that you can see in this example. Let's look at exothermic changes. During an exothermic reaction, heat moves from the system out into the surroundings. As a result, the surroundings get warmer. These reactions feel hot. Examples would include things like combustion and burning. Neutralization reactions between acids and bases are exothermic. Certain changes of state require release energy, freezing, condensation, and deposition, the change from gas to a solid. All of these release heat. Here's an example of a combustion reaction, in this case, the combustion of methane. The products of these reactions are generally more stable than the reactants. I'm going to indicate this in what's called an energy diagram, where I have the enthalpy on the left-hand side and the extent of the reaction or ra reaction pathway on the right-hand side. If we consider the position in terms of how much energy our reactants have and our products have, our products have less energy in them, less enthalpy. As a result, they're more stable. Think of it perhaps as a ball sitting on a step. That ball will roll and take a position that's lower. When it's lower, it's more stable than it was up on the step. So products are more stable in an exothermic reaction. The enthalpy change associated with these reactions is always a negative value. In order to move from products to reactants, they must lose enthalpy. We can also see this. some of these values are presented in our IB data booklets. Here's something out of table 13, the enthalpies of combustion. Here I've grabbed the value for methane, which corresponds to my reaction up above. That value, delta H, refers to the fact that this is an exothermic reaction. Let's look at a few of the information in this particular statement. First of all, I see it was done at standard conditions, 100 kilopascals and 25 degrees Celsius. C is telling me it's a combustion reaction. The negative sign that's here is telling me that this is an exothermic reaction, one that releases heat. And finally here, per mole. This refers to per mole of fuel. One mole of fuel will release 891 kilojoules of energy. We can also express enthalpy changes by means of what's called a thermal equation, where we actually embed the heat term right in the reaction itself. So here we embed the heat term for the combustion. In an exothermic reaction, the heat term is always embedded on the product side of the equation. If I double my reactants and products, I would also have to double the heat term. Let's look at the converse now, the endothermic changes. Endothermic changes involve heat moving from the surroundings into the system. 
Examples would include photosynthesis, the dehydration or removal of water from a hydrate, changes of state such as melting, vaporization, and sublimation. Here's an example of the dehydration of copper sulfate pentahydrate. Heat is required to accomplish this reaction. In this situation, if we look at our energy level diagram, we will see that our reactants are more stable than our products, meaning that the bonds and the internal forces are at a lower state in our reactants than they are in our products. And the delta H for these reactions is always a positive value. So for the reaction that I've shown here, according to the literature, its value is plus 66 kilojoules per mole. Again, I indicate that this is measured at standard conditions. This is telling me my type of reaction. This is indicating that it's endothermic or heat is a requirement. And in this case, it's per mole of fuel or per mole of copper sulfate pentahydrate. We can also write this as a thermal equation. The difference being the heat term exists as a reactant. So here's been a cursory look at the energy changes unit, its beginning. We're going to spend quite a bit of time now look at ways of actually measuring what this value is. What is the delta H of a particular reaction? Questions are welcome. Thanks for watching.